All right, what's going on, guys? My name is Nick, also known as Tetra Ninja, and this is going to be my quote unquote official review of Tomb Raider. This is going to be a spoiler free review, so I will not spoil anything for you guys in the game just in case you're afraid of watching this video. I finished the game last night. I finished it editing as well last night. The entire series will be 36 parts long. And uh, my deal with you guys still stands from last night. If we can get 6,000 likes and faves on that first part, I'll upload and hammer that upload button with six episodes a day on Tomb Raider. So 36 episodes, I've uploaded four. So that's 32 divided by eight. So that means that the series should be done by Friday, if I did my math right there, which is pretty crazy uh, to be done again by Friday when it releases on Tuesday. Uh, so uh, this is one of those rare occasions where I am actually finished a game before the official release of it, so I thought that you guys could possibly be interested in listening to my review of it. Just in case if you're on the fence about it, you could... If it sways you, you can go into your local game store and pre-order and maybe pick up some pre-order bonuses as well. But yeah, uh, the game itself was fantastic. It was a treat to play the entire time. It is definitely the best game I've played so far in 2013. And it's actually one of those few games... Uh, I haven't played a game like this in a while where when I, saw, when I was playing the game and I stopped playing it and I went in the wee hours in the morning when the sun was about to come out, when I went to bed, the moment I woke up, I wanted to keep playing it again. So that's kind of like my pitch for it, that it keeps you wanting to play it, which is something that uh, I can't say for every single game that I play, obviously. But uh, yeah, that's to give you an idea. In terms of presentation and graphics, I played the game on Xbox 360. Uh, from what I hear, the Xbox 360 version and PlayStation 3 version are fairly similar. And But... From what I see online via screenshots, I can tell you that most likely the PC version will be the most superior version out there. Uh, Square Enix has a history of doing a really, really good job with their PC ports. An example of this is Sleeping Dogs last year. Uh, Sleeping Dogs on PCs made even the, the most high-end PCs cry a bit just because it was so CPU intensive on the highest settings and based on the screenshots I've seen so far from the PC version of the game it's probably if you do have a gaming PC a gaming capable PC then you should definitely check out that version of the game uh, but that being said that the console version did run very very smoothly uh, my only issue is once I reached a certain area this only happened one time uh, when I played the entire game uh, I kind of hit like this scene and the frame rate just dropped really, really quickly. And it kind of stayed like that the entire time. So I, I thought that this isn't right. So what happened is I just exited back to the main menu and then re-entered my game again. And that fixed the frame rate drop issue. Once again, that only happened once, so that's not too bad in a game such as this where the environment is just so, so lush and so beautiful. Uh, even on console, it looked really, really good. So... Uh, if you guys are into presentation of video games or if graphics play a uh, big decision on what games you buy, then this game definitely has that. Uh, in terms of gameplay, uh, the gameplay was really, really good. Um, it was kind of like a progression. <laughs> you start off the entire game with just a, a torch. And by the end of it, you have basically an entire arsenal at your disposal, which you can upgrade. You can up so there's two different types of upgrades in the game. You can upgrade your individual items that you get, and you can upgrade Laura's Laura's skills. So uh, they operate on two separate things. Uh, so with Laura's skills, you get uh, EXP for that, and for all of your items, you there are. You go throughout the game collecting salvage, which you can collect through either boxes or if you uh, loot the dead bodies of enemies, and that's how you collect salvage. Uh, once again, salvage is used to upgrade your items, uh, so you can kind of pick and choose how you want to play the game, what items suit you the best, what, what weapons suit you the best, and play how you want, basically. And uh, with the lore skills, you can upgrade a variety of things, how fast you climb, um, how you can engage enemies and how you can kind of dodge enemies and how quickly you can take them down, how much damage you can take, all that kind of stuff. So it has a little bit of RPG elements as well. Not a lot, but I find that most games these days have some sort of leveling up system to kind of keep you engaged 
So the gameplay was really, really good. A lot of variety in how you can move around the environments and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the only, in terms of negatives, the only thing I would say is that the storyline wasn't that the most amazing story that you'll ever uh, encounter in a game. It was still passable. It was still, still pretty good for a game. Uh, it w although it was pretty predictable from the onset of what was going to happen and what was going on on the island. Um, it's, it, 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 it did its job, basically. So uh, I expect that from an action-adventure game. I don't expect action-adventure games to have the most engaging stories. Uh, the Uncharted series didn't really have the most engaging stories either, uh, but they still worked for those games. Um, as you expected, on topic of those types of action-adventure games, there are puzzles throughout uh, that you need to solve. And they're somewhat challenging in some parts, and sometimes they're a little bit obvious. Uh, the more difficult ones still have those like portal elements where you feel like you're dumb that you didn't solve it the very first time. Uh, so the puzzles and trials are kind of scattered throughout the main mission. You encounter them as you go. Uh, they also come up in side missions or mini tombs that you can kind of raid. Uh, so each tomb usually has one puzzle that you need to solve. And yeah, they're, pr they're pretty good so far. Uh, I wouldn't say they're as good as the puzzles in Uncharted 3. The puzzles in Uncharted 3 are really, really solid for an action adventure game, for not being an actual puzzle game, but uh, they were still really, really good and well designed, so uh, on that front, yeah. Um, and not only other negative, uh, I would have to say, as beyond the kind of like the cinematic uh, experiences with cutscenes, with quick time events, there weren't really any memorable, I would say, encounters with enemies. Uh, the game just kind of just throws waves and waves of enemies at you, and you kind of just progress basically on that. There's only one memorable boss I found, and actually two, and they kind of are defeated in the same way. Uh, so <laughs> there's only really two bosses or encounters in the game that I found that I kind of that stuck in my head. Uh, so beyond that, just basically bullet fodder for you to shoot at or arrow fire fodder for you to shoot at and bring down so uh, the controls are really good in terms of the combat system uh, the arrows and the, the arrows and the bullets function exactly how you would want them to and yeah uh, pretty much it like I said the game was I know I'm, I'm trying to do like um, a positive and negative sandwich for you guys and then kind of bring it all together at the end. But overall, the game, like I said, was really, really fun. I enjoyed the entire time I was playing it. And I'm going to actually get, get, be giving it a 9 out of 10. I know that's really, really high. Um, but I just enjoyed the game so, so much. The entire campaign probably spans about 8 hours long. 8 to 10 hours, depending on how in-depth you want to get with all the extra tombs and how how uh, achievement you're gonna ch achievement whore you're gonna get with collecting everything but uh, around probably eight to ten hours there is no multiplayer attached to it uh, uh, which I am perfectly fine with I don't feel that a game needs to have a multiplayer to get its full value out of it uh, so it's definitely a, a, a purchase for me uh, uh, and I suggest that you guys definitely check it out I know you really can't rent games anymore beyond like Gamefly. In Canada, Blockbusters have shut down, so you really only have a chance to purchase the game. But I feel that if you do purchase this game, you will not get disappointed by it. Once again, uh, 9 out of 10, which is pr pretty high. Uh, higher scores than I usually give for video games. Um, no game is perfect, in my opinion. I will never give a game a perfect score. Uh, if I, Because, like I said, I listed all those negatives of it. Um, that's the reason why I didn't get a perfect score, but it's definitely a game that you guys should check out. Probably going to be one of the highlights of Q1 this year in the first quarter of 2013. And that's basically my review for it. 9 out of 10, definitely check it out. Amazing experience the entire way through. And hopefully you guys are looking forward to the walkthrough when it fully releases on March 5th on the channel. And once again, if you don't, if you want to see those videos quickly, then make sure you go back to part one and drop the video a like and a fave. And hopefully you guys are going to have a good weekend. And thank you, as always, for the support with the channel. And I will see you guys next time. And as always, have a fantastic day.